Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. Uh, welcome back to another class on uh, Lost Sheep of Israel. Um, I want to get uh, a lesson out. It's kind of like in prep to. I, 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 I didn't prep anything formal to get started, but I was working on this lesson for my street teaching. This... Uh, this uh saturday where um i should teach at the border of mexico and texas uh el paso to be exact um but uh and so i mainly do it in spanish and i said you know man i gotta throw i gotta i can't neglect my english channel so i i gotta throw down this lesson let me put it down in English for the viewers and um, and so here it goes, man. I'm just gonna we're gonna get right into it. The lesson is based on perfection, and this is a lesson that I decided to do because you know this comes up a lot in the street teachings that oh we can't keep the law, we can't, we're not perfect. Only Christ was perfect, and you know. People are in such error having this mindset because they're, they're learning this from the doctrine of men and they're not um, considering what the scriptures has to say. And even um, as a follower of Christ, they're not even considering what Christ has to say about it. And so they, uh, they're they misinformed, um, they're being misled, and so... Uh, the Most High has uh, deemed his prophets out there to to correct such things and, and wake up the lost sheep of Israel. So here we go. With that being said, call halal, Yahweh Bashim, Mamalak, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Barakata. Um, let's go right into it. Let's go to Deuteronomy 18 and 13. And I'm, I'm there right now. And it, it's very simply said, thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Okay. And so when you tell people out there and say, you know, oh, oh we're perfect or you need to be perfect. Oh, no one's perfect. Ooh, that, that's like, uh, like uh, taboo to even say. Like, like people can't even believe that they can be perfect, but what they, what mostly it is, they have a misunderstanding of what perfection is and what, 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 what being perfect, it, it, it consists of. They think that, you know, you, you can't have imperfections or you can't have flaws. You know, we all are susceptible to flaws. We all for short, but what is perfection in God's eyes? Let's take David, for example. Um, David uh, committed a grave, grave sin, but yet he repented from it, and he still was perfect before God's eyes. I mean, and by no means am I perfect. Look, <laughs> I, I'm looking at myself in the video, and I see these tattoos, and I, you know what I mean? I've repented from it. I haven't gone back to do any any work since I've been in the truth. So, I mean, I wish I could peel this off like a sticker if I could, but I can't, you know, it's something that, you know, I was flawed in, 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 in my thinking and, and in my direction and, and went out and did all this craziness to my body. And, you know, coming into the truth, I see how, how gravely wrong I was. So, um, how do I enter in perf into perfection? So uh, I repented from this. I keep the laws and statutes of the Most High God. And, and, and I refrain from doing any other such thing or anything else that is a transgression of the law, which we'll get into that shortly. So with that being said, let's go into, uh, we'll go to Hebrews 10. 16. Go Hebrews 10. Excuse me. My keyboard's in the way. And verse 
16. Okay. This is Hebrews 10 and verse 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those, after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. Okay? So, we're, we're, we're promised to, to... This is actually a new covenant scripture. This is how we actually combat people that actually think that they're in the new covenant because these things are not... Uh, written in everyone's heart. This is not, uh, everybody's not doing according to the law. And so uh, only the few elect um, are doing so and and they, they're already predestined to do these things from the jump anyway. Uh, and we'll get into that further into the lesson. So um, that's uh, Hebrews. Let's examine also in Hebrews um, chapter eight and verse 10. I'm going to try to be as brief as possible with this lesson. Um, it, it's really designed to go um, about three hours, uh, two to three hours on the street. And so, um, you know, I definitely want not to be long-winded in, in, in the lesson on video because I, I need to keep it compact for uh, my brothers and sisters with extreme ADD that cannot keep or have the time, you know, sometimes it's not even about it, ADD, it's about, you know, we're dealing with working people, families, and, and things that, and it, it, they can't be stuck to a video for two to three hours because, you know, they're running their daily lives, and I understand, so I, I don't want to be long-winded. With that being said, I'm going to be quiet and, and, and get to the next verse. So this is chapter 8, verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Of course, always, um, you know, affirming. I, I need to, when I'm out in the streets, I need to affirm this always because, um, the, you know, when you go out there and you're pushing Israel, 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 you know, people, you know, they're getting it confused with geographic Israel. They're getting it confused with the Jewish um, um, you know, and so that, you know, you always have to break down that, you know, or reaffirm and, and consistently bring out that we are the Israelites. So I always try to keep that, uh, fundamentally, uh, fundamentally, um, out there to, for the, for them to grasp that, that, that we're Israel, and so I always have to go into um, breakdowns of, of how we're the Israelites, but for time's sake, and, and you know, I'm just, now I'm not going to assume that everybody that's on here is privy to the truth, but they, I have other lessons that break down that we're the Israelites, so um, we, we fit the description of the Israelites today. The most I said he would never do away with his people, so his people had to be prevalent here today, and as well as our enemy. He said he would have uh, uh, indignation towards uh, uh, certain nations forever, you know, so they have to be around for, for that destruction. So, again, I'm getting, I'm venturing off into other lessons, but you can look up those lessons um on my channel and other brothers that are putting out these lessons as well. So, but with that being said, um, Hebrews 8 and 10 says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Okay, so he made this promise unto Israel. Okay, he didn't make this promise to anyone else. There's nowhere in the Bible where he's promising anything other than um, the nation of Israel. Okay, after those days, say the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and they will be to them and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. So he, he's strictly saying he's going to be uh, 
strictly the God of Israel. Okay, and you can uh, reaffirm that in Joel 2 and 27 and Amos, uh, uh, I believe, 3 and 6. Where, you know, he says he's in the midst of Israel and he's their God and, and only their God. Okay, I'm paraphrasing, but you can look those up as well and you can see that he he is only the God of Israel. And so he, he's only going to do this with Israel. Okay, and so... If we go to James uh, 4 and 8, just go real quick here, James 4 and 8, and it says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So, th this purifying of the heart. Here's where we're going to start explaining what the heart is, okay? So, the, the heart is the mind. Because the, the, the actual heart is an organ that's just meant to pump, to pump blood. It's not, it's not, it's not um, it doesn't feel or think. The, your feelings and thoughts come from your mind. Okay, and and when you're double minded, you're unstable in all your ways, says the scriptures. And so you can't you, you have to know what is the truth, what what is what is uh, how you can be purified through this truth. And, and, and the only way you can be purified is through uh, the instructions of the most high. So we're, we're going to further get in, establish what I'm trying to say. I just don't want to jump the gun. Uh, there's a process to this so that you can uh, gain um, understanding. And so, uh, give me a second. Uh, I don't have my readers, and I hope that I can. I think I left them upstairs before I started the lesson. Like I said, this was pretty impromptu. But... I'm going to try to read these small letters because we're going to go into uh, Ecclesiasticus, uh, Sirach 6 and 37, okay? And so, this is Sirach. Uh, Sirach uh, 6. Verse 37, let thy mind be upon the ordinance of the Lord, okay, the ordinances of the Lord, and meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish thine heart and give thee wisdom at, the, at thy own desire. So basically, your desire should be wanting to keep these commandments. That 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 should be the thought in your mind, the 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 the, the desire of your heart, right? The thought of your mind that you should be dwelling in it within His law, statutes, and commandments, His ordinances. This this is what's going to purify you. This is what's going to keep you in that perfection. Because this law, this, this, excuse me, Salakia, this lesson is about perfection, right? So we're going to get down to what is the actual definition of perfection and how you're perfect before um, the Most High God, Yahweh. Okay? So with that being said, this should be the 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 desire of your heart, the desire of your mind, to 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 dwell in it within um, the the Most High's instructions, commandments, laws, statutes, and ordinances for you know the proper living in your life. Okay, to live a proper life, a perfect life. Okay, uh, uh, again, I have another um, apocryphal scripture. Strained eyes today, but we're gonna to go to Second Maccabees one and three. I'm on it right here. And Second Maccabees one. 
verse 3 reads, And give you all the heart to serve him and to do his will with good courage and a willing mind. Again, you, you, you have to be wanting to do this. You have to be willing because this is the problem. People make the excuse of not wanting to be perfect or, or the inability to be perfect to give them an excuse to do otherwise, uh, an excuse to not want to uh, do exactly what the Lord instructs so that they call, do whatever the hell they want or the wickedness they want and and be in that uh, Christian dogma mindset of, um, yeah, I'll just go you know, pray my sins away on Sunday with Pastor Porkchop and, you know, and, you know, I'll be cleansed and, and everything will be good. But then come Monday, you're back to your old ways. And, um, you know, the scripture says, I, I didn't prepare this uh, um, as part of the, the, the thing. And I want to keep it moving. But it just to paraphrase, the scripture says, there's no sacrifice for, for sin, willful sinning. So meaning, not even the blood of Christ, not even the blood of Christ is going to be able to to cleanse you or wash you of your sins or 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 make you whole if you're continually sinning because you're playing the game. You're playing the game with the Most High Yahweh and Bashem Yahweh Shai. Also, you're also desecrating the name of, of the Son as well. Okay, because. He stood for the Father, and and and, and in in not keeping his his, his if not abiding in the Father's love, you're not abiding in His, and vice versa. Okay, so let's hit up uh, Philippians four and thirteen. I'm trying to go as fast as I can. Philippians four and thirteen. And it reads, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So again, this is how, how, how you put um, uh, these Christians in, in, into a trick bag. Because, uh, uh, you know, they'll go on and say they can do all things through Christ. But why then can't you keep the law as instructed? You think that the Most High... Or his son is going to instruct you into something that you can't accomplish? It, can't you not do all things through Christ that strengthens you? So he can only strengthen you to do your wicked, you know, to, to be wicked or and then go and, and, and repent and be wicked again and repent. You know, you have the strength to do your own will or, or, or you have the strength to do your own uh, wanting of wickedness, but you don't have the strength to be perfect before God by accomplishing the law. And I'm already giving key words as to what perfection is, but we're going to get to the definition shortly. So let's go into um, Matthew uh, 5 and 48, which it, again, Christ is not going to instruct you into doing something that you cannot Accomplish because how then are you going to be Christ like if he's telling you to do something and you can't do it and, and, and do it as he did it? Because the, the, we're going to get to that Christ like too. Because Christians like to use that oh, I'm Christ like, I'm a follower of Christ. Okay, so then why can't you follow Christ into exactly what he did? Okay, so um, Matthew 5 and 48 reads, Be ye there perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven perfect so not only is is he instructing you to be like him he's also saying be perfect as your father is perfect so this whole perfection thing is about a wholeness about being complete you know and so the the only way you can be complete is via the instructions of the most high okay yeah how so um so Let's get let's get uh Second Samuel's twenty two and thirty one. Second Samuel's twenty two and thirty one. Right. 
and it reads, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. So, you know, if you trust in the Most High, he's going to shield you with this word. He's going to buckle you with this word. He's going to put this shield uh, upon you and, and, and cradle you into his to his understanding. So you don't, you don't, uh, you just got to put your trust in God. And, 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 and most people don't want to trust the most high. Most people don't, 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 well, not that they don't. They, they have the illusion that they do, but they really don't. Okay, so the, you're not really putting your full trust in the, in the most high. I, I've seen people put their trust on the most ridiculous things, such as false idols, such as... Um, uh, the words of other men without proof. You know, here we say, thus saith the Lord. I never speak upon what 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 Yaban wants to say or what Yaban thinks. You know, I I I, I say I say, thus saith the Lord. Here we prove all things with this word. And so anything that that I say, I'm backing up with the scriptures so that we don't get confused. I'm not here trying to give my opinion or my thoughts. Because my thoughts are not the thoughts of the Most High, okay? I'm just uh, giving a breakdown of what the Most High's intention is for our lives. And I do that humbly through through His teachings via the, the Holy Spirit that has uh, blessed me. And I accept this, this labor of love humbly because, you know, I, I, I'm humbled by the fact that He's chosen me to, to be able to see things for what they are. And not everybody can do that because, again, you're not abiding in His love because you're not abiding in His instruction. So you have to think of it as a parent, you know, if your kids are just bucking what you want them to do and they're like, screw you, dad, screw you, mom, you know what I mean? You, you don't, you don't feel their love. And then in turn, you're not, you're not going to bless them. You're not going to take care of them. You're not going to go to Walmart and buy them a video game or something if they're not respecting you. So the, the, the mysteries of the, of the word are giving to those that actually, you know, do as the Most High instructs and, uh, you know, you put him first and everything's added on to you, okay? So, again, I'm going to try not to be a lot long-winded. I'm going to keep my, my breakdowns and my explanations uh, um, a, a bit shorter for sake of time, okay? I want to create a nice, cool lesson that you guys can be edified and, and, and not be extremely long-winded, okay? So, Okay, um, with that being said, we're going to go into um, Psalms 19 and 7. Okay, and because the, the Bible's clear, I don't, I, I don't know where, where people really get it twisted, but then again, you know, uh, even Christ said, you know, to, to them is given in parables and to you is given the mysteries of the word because it's not meant for everybody to see. And so because not everybody's meant for this. And, you know, I've given those explanations in other lessons as well. And I'll give probably another lesson in breaking down predestination, election, and so forth. And, and why not everyone is um, able to get it or is going to be saved in the end. And, and we should know this as common sense because it says the, the, the road to destruction is wide and, and the road to salvation is very narrow. And we can't expect everybody's going to be able to go through the straight and narrow. But perfection is about being on the straight and narrow. Okay. So with that being said, Psalms uh, 19 and 7 reads, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul the testimony of the Lord, the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You know what I mean? So, you, you know, he, he, this all becomes very simplistic for maybe even a simple person, right? 
and 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 you're all of a sudden made more wiser than those that think that they you know they went to theology college and and got degrees in this and or been pastoring for x amount of years and and, and they swear they got this down pat but the Lord says he, he, he makes the simple wise in, in this truth, you know, through the law that is perfect and it will convert you. Most of these people don't want to keep the law or are not keeping the law, but they want to instruct you on how to live your life uh, via church, you know, and those don and, and those tithes and and those offerings, you know, that, that you're pushing. So, you know, he, he's going to he, he's going to make something that's sensible to you in your in your humanistic Disneyland uh, uh, receiving type mind wh where you think that, you know, in your own vanity, nobody can tell you nothing. But. You know, he makes he, he makes the, the simple wise through this law, those that are willing to be converted uh, and into perfection with this law. Um, you're going to be wiser than most. OK, so um, Hebrews 7 and 28 is. Uh, let's read it. Hebrews 7 and 28. Hebrews chapter 7 and 28 reads. For the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmity, but the word of the oath, which was since the, which was since the law, maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. So this is, this is, uh, Election, so to speak, right here. Okay, well, no, it, it it is speaking about election, but I say so to speak because you may not get it, but you have to see here that this is this is an oath that he made since the law that you keep this law, he, you you're gonna have like I said, the law is perfect, converting the soul, making the 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 the, the wise simple, right? Making the wise from from the simple, right? So it makes simple men into high priests when you when when you keep this law because everything gets opened up for you you see things that that you couldn't see before because again he's giving the mysteries uh, of this word to his son to his children that are consecrated forevermore in this word in this law and these the, the willingness to be perfected in this law is going to open up these doors for you okay so and and, and so but this this is this was what what was already predestined for for men to come into this so um again uh i have predestination um lessons just go into them but this is part of the election uh, the the willingness to want to uh do this and and so you know your wisdom is going to be that of a high priest if you keep this in perfection okay all right so let's go to First Kings. Let's go to First Kings. And we'll go to chapter 8. And we're going to look at, we're going to examine verse 61. Okay, and it reads, Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes and keep his commandments as at this day. So meaning every day, all day, every day, we keep, we love the most high via his 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 instructions for our lives. And his instruction for our lives are within the law. And the instructions for Israel is in the law. And this should be the desire. Let your heart therefore be perfect. Okay? Your heart, your mind, okay. Keep, keep keep this prevalent in your mind always to 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 be you know sometimes we have to repent daily and and, and then you know again as long as you're not taking it as a game you know we may fall short we we come into some 
difficulties in our life that may cause us to veer slightly and then you know the the, the key is catching yourself and and and, and using the mediator which is Hamashiach Yahweh Shai to 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 repent unto Yahweh uh, by by admission of what we did wrong recognition of what we did wrong and then repentance of what we did wrong you know what I mean Turn back to to your righteous ways, and do not continue to uh, lead yourself astray in continual continual sin. Okay, so um, but you know the, you shouldn't make a habit of it, or, or or at least be willing to to sin. Saying, yeah, I know I'm going to sin because this was the problem with the Pharisees. You know, they would they they would already have their sacrifice already ready knowing that they were going to sin so that's just like playing the game with it so if you're already thinking yeah i'm going to do this but i'm going to repent and, and yahweh is going to be merciful you know you could just lose you can very well lose your life playing that game all right because the most high will destroy you um playing playing games like that so i i hope that you do not do that i hope that you're not consciously sinning you know just uh if you catch yourself you have a mediator Correct that action and push forward. All right. So, um, but again, this should be the desire of your heart to, to want to do what's right. Okay. Let's go to First Chronicles 28 and 9. All right. First Chronicles 28 and 9. <clears throat> okay. I'll, I'll just kicked in because I was about to go via the script first chronicles uh, 28 and 9 and it reads and thou solomon my son know that god of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind for the lord searches all hearts and understandeth all imagination of the thoughts if thou seek him, he will be found in thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Like I said, you, you'll wind up losing your life playing with this. You know what I'm saying? But that again, this is a, a, a script to see, a, a precept to see that um, perfection is, is, is the mind. The heart is the mind. Okay? So a perfect heart means your mind is... Is, is kept focused on uh, keeping the law and doing what's right, okay? So let's move on to Psalms 94 and 16. And it reads... Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? So this is a setting yourself apart of the, of the workers of iniquity. Setting yourself apart of your own wicked ways and, and standing up for the most high. You know, the, 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 this is where the question is put before thee. Who's going to stand up and want to represent the most high, Yahweh? All right. So um, let's move on to um, you know. With that being said, now we've reached the point where we're gonna get the actual uh, definition of what uh, perfect is. Okay, and just you can look it up real quick. So, in, in, in the Hebrew, excuse me, okay, in the Hebrew, okay, hold on. perfect means, um, perfect means really unblemished, okay? And so, but I, I, want, I want to get it up, all right? And so, we'll go right here. And, um, okay, 
so perfect. Here we go. Which is tamim, okay? And when we look up this word in the Hebrew tamim, okay, it says complete, whole, right? Um, and we were, I was already giving these key words out, right? Uh, complete, whole, entire, sound. Um, and then it goes further to 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 uh, give usages of the word and um, or more descriptive of the word meaning unblemished, okay, without blemish, okay, okay, without spot, undefiled, okay. So and in the and just for sake of time because I already did the work, um, and and then um, in the Greek. Um, it gives a, a, a similar translation, but it means accomplish. So basically, when we are accomplishing the law, when we're striving to 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 be whole and complete, when when we're being wholesome, when we're being unblemished, okay? Because again, the law is perfect. It converts the soul. It 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 it, it, it wipes away those blemishes when you attain to the law. So that is what perfection is. It's not like like I'm gonna walk uh, uh, um, like I'm this perfect thing without flaw. You know, I'm gonna walk this walk so perfectly, you know what I mean? And, 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 and I'm not gonna slip up because I'm so perfect. You know what I mean? Because people take this word uh, out of content with, with out of context, when they when, when they say, "Oh, you can't be perfect," because they they expect you to have uh, the best complexion, the 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 best look, the best everything. You have to be so like without uh, a, a hair out of place, you know, perfect. And 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 so they 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 get this notion that they can't be that, that they can't accomplish that because no one is perfect kind of that that expression really kills our people because that thing of of no one being perfect is is it makes it like it's not a it's not attainable and so we see here that the most high and his son is instructing us to do so that we can be okay but it, there, there there's a formula for it and it, and it's just keeping the law doing what the most high says do and and doing not what the most high says do not and, and 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 it's as simple as that the people make it more complex than it is but it's just simply um listening to your dad listening to the most high listening to your father okay your spiritual father and and and, and following his instructions okay and his instructions is is the law it keeps you away from uh transgression Okay, and we're going to get to that real quick. So, um, all right, so Luke, uh, Luke 6 and 40. Okay, and so you're going to see, okay, how um, it, it, it's not, it's not something that you, you, you can't do. The Most High and, and His Son will not instruct you. Um, to do something you couldn't accomplish, okay? So, um, Luke 6 and 40 reads, one more, this is Luke chapter 6 verse 40, the disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master so what does this mean right so you're not above your master okay so what what does the scripture says right uh you, you, your head is is christ and christ's head is the father right and, and you're the head of, of, of your of your rib your wife right uh, um so and she's the head of the of the children so th there's an order to all this there's levels to this right and so but but if you're keeping 
the law, just like everyone else has kept the law, just like Christ has kept the law, you know, then you're within that same perfection. Okay, you're as your father. So this is what uh, you're as your 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 master, right? So this this is what that Christ-like expression from from the world of uh, Christianity, Disney Disneylandity. Um, they get this right. Oh, I'm Christ-like. I'm gonna be a follower of Christ. Okay, let's do that. We can be Christ-like. So you can be Christ-like in everything else, but in keeping the law, because you can't be perfect. Okay, which probably before hearing this, you probably didn't even think that that that, that the law was the perfection that the Most High was looking for. Okay. The, the the actual obedience to his word, okay? It, it, it's as simple as that. He, he gave you commandments to do, and you just listen and do. And it's not grievous. All right, but we'll get to that, all right? So um, we're going now into, let's, let's pick up the pace here. Um, 1 John 2 and 6. This is, this is the Christ light, right? John 2 and 6 reads, He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Okay? So you have to walk this walk. And you got to walk it like Christ did. Okay? And Christ gave all honor and glory to his father. He did as his father said do. He obeyed what his father commanded him to do. Even to die on that on, on, on that cross for our sins, okay? Because this is where grace comes in. He, he, he did an ultimate sacrifice so that we wouldn't be uh, punished because we would be dying uh, hardcore, you know, uh, uh, breaking these laws, you know what I mean? But through grace, uh, through the mercy of his grace, we, we're still given a chance to to get with the program and figure this out, okay? You know, most would say that, that Christ died and then the law is done away with. But but not even Christ would disobey his father to change anything up. And so he never came with that message. And I don't know where where, where, where you get that from because I'm going to establish some, some key precepts that teach otherwise, Okay. All right, so with that being said, let's move on to Matthew 7 and 21. All right. Salakia. Yeah, yeah, Matthew. Matthew 7 and 21. Okay, and it reads, excuse me, it reads, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. This is Christ's word. He's saying, whoever does the will of my dad is going to enter through. Okay. But you got a lot of people saying, Lord, Lord, and, and, and all everything, and, uh, and I'm washed away and cleansed by the sweet blood of Jesus. But they're not keeping what his father says. It, you know, you can, you, you know, you can cry, Lord, Lord, all you want. And, and it's not going to work for you if you're being disobedient. All right. So, um, John 15 and 10. Just to further... Um, Establish that Christ was uh, promoting his father. He was giving all glory and honor to the father. Okay, so 15 and 10 reads. So, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and I abide in his love. Okay, so it, it's a trickle down effect, right? 
the Father commanded, he, ab he abided. We're under Christ. We abide and follow him unto what the Father wanted ultimately. Okay? So, uh, but this, these things are, are, are plain. Um, Luke 16 and 17. It's almost time for me to pick up my son from pre-K, but let's see if I can get this knocked out in the next 10 minutes. Uh, I've got about 10 minutes to go. 16, Luke 16 and 17 reads, And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. So this is Christ's words. He's saying the law is not the law is not gonna fail you. It's easier for, for heaven and earth, which will not pass, it's always gonna be here. The most high uh, 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 made a pact and a promise that he would not destroy the earth. It's gonna be here. The kingdom is going to be established here on earth. Okay. So so the, the heaven and earth is not going to pass. It's going to be ushered in anew, but it's not going to be passed. So Christ is saying that, you know, not, 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 a, not a jot, not a tittle, not nothing is going to pass from this law. It's not going to fail you. Okay? So that's the instructions from Christ. So where do you get otherwise? All right? So, um... Uh, Mark uh, 5, which further establishes that. I, I'm excuse me, still Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Okay, Matthew 5. And, and we're going to read 17. So it says, think not, this is Christ's words, think not that I've come to destroy the law. All right? He's saying, yeah, I, I didn't come to destroy the law. I didn't come to do away with it. Don't, don't be thinking crazy. All right? Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, here's where, 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 where Christians will, 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 will um, twist this up. Oh, he fulfilled the law, and that's it. No, he came to fulfill the law, to do the law. Okay, that's what fulfillment of the law is. You do and you fulfill it. Okay, it does it, but at no point did he say, okay, now that I fulfilled it, we're done. Okay, you know, and, and, and let's, let's move away from it. At no point did he say that. He said, I didn't come to destroy the law. Okay, so that the, the first sentence should be key that he's didn't, he didn't, don't be thinking that I claim to do this. Okay. For verily I say unto you, like, like we read um, in the previous precept, till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or, or one tittle shall pass, shall in no wise pass from the law. Okay? So ain't, don't think that not a jot, not a tittle is, is passing from the law. He's telling you this. So why do you misconstrue this? Okay? Till all be fulfilled. Now let's get this. All be fulfilled. Has everything all been fulfilled? Then you should not have no uh, 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 expectations of Christ coming back because that's still a, another fulfillment that has to be fulfilled, right? For him to come back and save us from destruction, okay? So that hasn't happened, okay? The, raw, the laws are not written in, 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 in everyone's heart so that no one has to be teaching them. That's what... So, the new covenant hasn't been ushered in, so that hasn't been fulfilled. Okay, so it says to all be fulfilled, and guess what? When all be fulfilled and everything is put in its proper place, guess what? We're gonna be doing the law of the Most High like we were supposed to from get. Okay, so um, so okay. Let's have an understanding of, of, of what uh, 
what sin is, okay? So 1 John 3 and 4, real quick. 1 John 3 and 4 tells us, Okay, 1 John 3 and 4, and it says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is transgression of the law. Okay, so if you're sinning, you're transgressing the law. So if you're going to be like most, they say, Oh, I'm going to die a sinner. Then guess what? You're transgressing the law. You, you, you're going to be put to death. Okay, it is that simple. And I, I'm picking up the pace, but you should be already starting to see this through these precepts that this law is still intact and this is what what's justifying you before christ and yahweh okay all right because christ is only coming to save those people without blemish and the only way you're gonna have uh, be, be um, without blemish is keeping the law that's how you stay in perfection that's how you stay uh um cleansed okay so because otherwise what you're saying is this galatians 2 and 17 okay so what you're saying is this all right so i i, I want christians to to get this through their head if, if this is what you think uh is is permissible by your faith in in christ okay which don't get it twisted Christ is my Lord and Savior, my King, my, my everything, okay? My head, okay? And to, and, and who I, whom I follow. So uh, don't don't get it twisted. Don't say, oh, that, you know, we're preaching against Christ. We're supposed to be one with Christ, right? We're following Christ, right? And Christ followed the Father, right? So, and I was going to further establish this, but I might have to pause and come back to it. And uh, we're about... A little under an hour real quick but um galatians 2 and 17 reads okay but while we seek to be justified by christ okay how are we seeking to be justified by christ we're doing work so that he can recognize us that we're doing what's proper to be justified by him right and so um we ourselves are are, are found sinners so if you could if you're seeking to be justified and you're found a sinner is there is, is is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Okay, so saying so if Christ and what you believe is the doctrine of Christ is is to continually sin because Christ got you, are you saying that now Christ is allowing you to be a sinner, and then therefore you're calling him the minister of sin? This is what you're doing, and Paul himself said, God forbid god forbid that we're doing this okay so don't be thinking that you're a sinner you're gonna die a sinner and and, and and christ is going to allow you to be a sinner because you have no other choice you do have a choice you have a choice to follow his father like he said be perfect like my father's perfect do his commandments this is all the things that that christ preached but yet you think that Somewhere he says something else where he didn't give glory to his father and he took it in a different direction. Okay. All right. There's some, some key scripts that are going to prove that he didn't do that. Um, okay. Let me, let me pause this. I'll, um, I'll be right back and to, to wrap this up. Okay. I'm back. What a mess. Up. Okay, I'm back and um, let's get this going. Okay. All right. So where were we? Um, yeah. So I mean, I'm hoping that you guys are not uh, venturing off into uh, thinking that you know it's okay for you to do. Uh, what you want, how you want, because Jesus, uh, who you ignorantly call Jesus, is going to allow um, such things to continue, and he's still going to save you, and then he's still going to consider yourself 
saved by the blood of Jesus. And so, um, but the reason um, you prefer um, your methods, the reason that you will um, adhere to the doctrines of men uh, that because they give you the excuse to continue in your wicked way. So, so you refuse to want to do the law. That, 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 that's the bottom line. But in the law is the perfection that we're um, discussing today. So um, let's go to Hebrews. We'll go to chapter 12 and 25. And it reads, See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on, that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Okay, let, let's let's break that down. All right. So, if you refuse the the the, the men that are doing this work, the prophets of the Most High, the teachers, you refuse even Christ, which you you in your mind you think you don't, but you really are. Uh, and, and 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 you refuse even Christ. How much more are you refusing the Creator of it all, the Most High Yahweh? Okay, so uh, that's what it boils down to. And so uh, we're gonna go to James one twenty five, the brother of Christ. Okay, the actual bloodline brother. Of Christ. So. Um, chapter 1. Verse 25. Reads. But whoso looketh into the perfect law. Of liberty. Okay. The, the truth shall set you free. Right. You should be liberated by the by this perfect law. And continue therein. He be not forgetful hearer, but a doer or of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. So your deed shall be this work. And if you do this work, then you shall be blessed in it. Okay? So, you know, Christ's brother is telling you this is, it, 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 it's a do thing. You know, the, the, there's life in, in, in the work. Okay, all right, so faith without works is what? Death, okay, so, you know, you can put your faith in a lot of things, and most definitely put your faith in Christ, but if you're not justified by Yahweh in your works, then it's only going to lead to your demise, okay, all right, so, um, 1 John 2, and and, and 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 we're coming up on on how even Christ is going to break down the law for you, you know. So uh, you can't get around some of these things. All right, so we're gonna go to uh, First John, and 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 you're gonna get a lot of John and First John and and, and Matthew and stuff because we we we're, I, I want to show you perfection. In the New Testament, right, uh, which because uh, Christians say, yo, you know, you're going to the Old Testament, that, you know, so I'm sticking to the new, I'm sticking to the words of Christ, I'm sticking to Christ to break this down so that you can't get around saying Christ changed up everything for you to continue in wickedness. That, that's just absurd. Okay, so um, 1 John 2. And we're going to read 4 through 6. All right. So let's read that. All right. And it reads, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keepeth his word, 
In him verily is love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Christ-like following the footsteps of the Mo of, of, of the Most High Son, Yahweh Shai, you know, he, he kept the commandments. He followed his father. You follow Christ. This is being Christ-like, okay? You're, you're following as even a, as he walked. It's telling you this. So if you don't keep these commandments, you're, you're considered to the most high a liar and the truth is not in you. He didn't, he didn't bestow the truth or the light of the truth in you. That There's no light in you. Okay. All right. So moving on because we're wrapping this up now. Uh, John 17, 22 through 24. John 17, 22 through 24. And it reads, And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Okay? The Father gave him the glory. He's given it to us, that they may be one, even as we are one. So, here's, and and, and I'm just going to go into a quick trinity, one that's cut uh, 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 of of. Uh, Yahweh Shai, who you ignorantly call Jesus, as being the one God or 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 or, or God in one, and 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 and, and they're, they're mingled into one, okay? Because here it's saying that that will be one with Him. So despite it is written, "Ye are gods," and Christ said that to us, that doesn't mean we're the Most High God. Doesn't mean He's the Most High God. He follows the Most High God. He's in one accord with the Most High God as we should be in one accord with Him and we all should be one in the same accord. That's what that means. So don't let those scriptures twist you up or somebody teach you a doctrine that, that that's just not so. And there's plenty, plenty, plenty. Even in this lesson, you're seeing that He's giving all honor and glory to His Father, to His Father, to His Father, to His Father. Okay? And and I got a couple more that are going to cut that notion too as well. But okay, so um, moving on to 23, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. So the father is sending the son, okay? All right, he, he's, he's saying, all right, you sent me unto these people. These people are mine and we're one with you, okay? It's also like, I mean, even when we're married and we're joined, we're made one. Does that mean I'm my wife? No, it just means she should be in one accord with me, one in oneness with me and with the most high, okay? But the, that that's a, a man that is keeping these law statutes and commandments and his wife is abiding uh, as one with him because if she's not in the same accord then she is she's separate despite you're together she she she's she's pulling herself away from that oneness because she doesn't want to be in that same accord okay so i mean and um 24 father i will that they also, he's saying, Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Okay, so e even before the, um, the, the, the foundation of the earth creation and, and creation, he was... He was there with the Father, and 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 his chose and the elect were were chosen and given unto him, okay. And so this is all uh, all in together now, okay. So let's go to uh, John seven and sixteen. All right, moving down a little bit down to. 
chapter 7 of John. And it reads, and, and check this out. So, so you know, how can he be God? He is a God. He's not the most high God, Yahweh. He is Yahweh Shai. He is the son of God. We need to recognize that he's the son of God. And the Bible tells us to recognize that he's the son of God. And so here in John 7 and 16, he's giving all glory and honor to his father. And he's saying that it's not even his doctrine. Check it out. And Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Okay? He's saying it's not his doctrine, but him that sent him. And we're going to um, read through 16 through 19. Okay? 17 reads, If any man will do his will, he shall... Know of the doctrine whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Right? So now look he, 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 how he creates the separation uh, uh, of, of persons, not of, uh, not of the, 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 the oneness, okay, of the persons. Okay? He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true. And no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law? Okay, so he's telling you, did not Moses give you the law? Who did he give it to? He gave it to the Israelites, okay? So he, he, he's speaking to Israelites, okay? Did he not give you the law? And yet none of you keep the law, okay? But he's speaking to, 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 to um, a certain people group that, that were, they, they were they were pushing the law, but they weren't keeping the law. But he goes... Why, why go ye about to kill me? Because on top of these, on top of this, these people create this this doctrine, right? Like, 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 uh, the you don't have to keep the law anymore, and and, and you're saying, you, you know, you're actually killing the purpose of Christ. You're killing the purpose of what He came for and what He means, okay? Or, or, or what or what it means to 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 follow in in His Father's footsteps as we are to follow in His. Okay, so there we go. That that you know again, he 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 puts all honor and glory to the Father. He he follows, you know, what 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 the Father acts as, acts of him. In fact, um, let's go to Matthew four and four. All right, and so Again, Christ's words. But he answered and said, it is written. Okay? Christ is, is quoting. He's quoting. It's not even his words. He's quoting it's written. Okay? Christ was teaching from the old prophets. He was quoting the old prophets. He was quoting Moses. He was quoting the law. Okay? So he, he says, but it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yahweh. Okay, so where where is it written? Okay, we, we got to proceed. He's telling you, you, you got to do exactly what my father says. Everything that proceeded out of his mouth is valid. How is he, his son going to invalidate the most high's word? Okay, so where is it written? Well, it's written in Deuteronomy. Okay, um, eight and three. So we go to Deuteronomy 8 and 3. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he may make thee know that man does not live by bread alone, by bread only, Salakia, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doeth man live. So you're going to live when you eat this spiritual manna, when you eat of this roe, when you eat of this living, when you drink of this living water, when you feed off of the word of Yahweh and of the words of 
your Christ, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, because he fed off of the words of his father. Okay? Trickle down effect. You 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 you, you gotta fall in line, you gotta get in order. Bottom line. Okay? So and so in Malachi in three and six, the, the, the most high says he changes not. So why would he send his son to change something where he says he don't change? Okay? So just, um, we know that's in Malachi 3 and 6. So I'm just going to move on and wrap this up. And, and, and I'm going to wrap it up with, with, with Isaiah 55 and 11. Okay? Because again, Fifty-five and eleven. There's something I, I I think I wanted to give a further breakdown on how Christ what what, what was was um, breaking down the law. There's more if you want to look into it more uh, in, in in John uh, seven and sixteen. Um, he, he 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 elaborates more on the law of Moses, but Isaiah fifty-five and eleven. Okay. Because I, I I'm not gonna beat a dead horse. If you haven't gotten by gotten it by now, then you know I, I can't I can't help you, and, and and the Most High can't help you, and and Christ can't help you because there's no sacrifice for your willful sinning. You just want to be in sin. You don't want to keep this law. You refuse to keep this law. Okay, so you don't want to progress. But you you have to understand that that the Most High, Yahweh, put this word out. And, and it's not going to come back to him void, okay? So, and, and there's no man, not Paul, not Peter, not Christ himself is going to change what the Most High put out. And these men, whether you may confuse Paul's writing, he's not going uh, against what the Most High put out. you just misconstruing it. But this is just going to solidify, and I'm going to end it with this, is... Uh, 55 and 11 of Isaiah reads, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Proceed out of every word out of the Most High's mouth, out of Yahweh's mouth, okay? Again, I should read again. So shall go forth, uh, forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. The Most High play, it's the Most High's pleasure to His word be accomplished in every sense of it. Law, statutes, commandment, ordinance, you name it. If it proceeded out of the words of, 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 of the Most High, we do. Prophets did. Christ did. Okay? Peter, Paul, uh, all the apostles did. All the prophets did. Ezekiel, Isaiah. David, uh, Solomon, did, okay? So so they proceeded to do as the Most High proceeded to um, put out in his law, statutes, and commandments, okay? So uh, I'm going to read it from the top. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing where, where to I sent it. Okay? He sent it to Moses. It went forth throughout the prophets, throughout everyone. And he sent it through Christ by sending Christ and sent it. Christ did it as an example. He's an example to us. If we're going to be Christ-like, we're going to follow Christ. We're going to do as Christ did. Christ kept the commandments. We will keep the commandments. Call halal, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Mamalak, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Barakata. Okay, so all praises to the Most High and in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. Um, uh, Shalom, brethren. Um, peace, blessings, love. From your brother Yaban, from the lost sheep of, uh, of Israel. Hopefully, this lesson was um, enlightening for you. Um, it, it was more geared to the notions of uh, of 
Christians and, and their twisted up doctrines. Uh, we, we're breaking down the strongholds. We're bringing out the true light of the word. And so hopefully um, we pray that uh, it seeds in, in the elect and, and uh, my sheep shall hear my voice, saith the, the most high. And so um, listen to, to what's coming out in these words. I'll be back at you with some more precepts uh, um, soon. Um, yeah, most high in Christ bless you, brothers and sisters in the truth. Um, and uh, most high in Christ bless um, all these uh, prophets and, and, and brothers and sisters in the truth doing this work so that we can eventually qualm Yasharala and get up out of here. Shalom, brothers. Peace.